Hello, I'm Joel Barrett, General Manager of Missoula Community Access Television. Thanks for joining us in our ongoing interviews with candidates for City Council, City of Missoula, in the fall of 2015. In the studio with me now is Michael Ellsworth. He's a candidate for Ward 6. Thanks, Michael, for coming over. Thanks for having me. You're most welcome. And sorry about your email. No, it's all great. <laughs> Took you a little longer to get here. Um, so I made these five questions, as I mentioned before, just as an opportunity for candidates to say what's important to them. And um, everyone got the same questions. So here's your first one. What motivates you to run for office? Well, I've seen here recently in the city, especially over the last couple of years, great shifts and changes, as well as, you know, we've had a lot of economic turmoil. Um, I'm a really good businessman. I studied history, political science, uh, business and eco uh, economics, environmental studies. I'm a big real estate uh, individual. And uh, right now, I'm engaging into conservation and preservation. So I see we need strong and transparent and wise leaders that sit on the city council that know multifaceted uh, aspects about how to run a city and do it as like a business and do it not profitable, but benefit, you know, beneficiary for everyone, as the people should be benefactors. And I don't really see a whole lot within the community as in outreach programs. There are a few workshops that are designed to assist in only f like a certain fields, but a lot of people need uh, that extra oomph, and the only way you can do that is by going out there and mobilizing, organizing, and bring people together you know, the old saying, we either sink or swim together. Okay. And this question is, everyone said it was kind of related, their motivation and their qualifications. And you kind of mentioned that, your background in business and so on. So that's question two. Why do you think you are qualified to run for this office? When I, uh, I was, I'm a veteran and a small business owner. When I got out of the Army, I had pretty much immediately moved out to Seattle because that was where all the real good jobs were back at you know, 2007 to 2009 when we had the economic uh, crisis. And I went out there and I lucked out and I was uh, taken under the wing of a you know, pretty large scale um, real estate developer. And from there I learned all kinds of things, you know, from savings and loan associationships to mortgage-backed securities and how you fix them. And I would say with my experiences in business is really what is a driver for my qualification for office. And then just my enjoyment of it. You know, I studied it when I came back, history, political science, even though I had done a lot of uh, economics and uh, business studying in itself. And uh, I really enjoy it. It's a passion for me. And I want to bring that to the table. And I'm really believe that we can increase public participation, um, establish community workshops, you know, first time it would really be done on a large scale with the neighborhoods, and just keep bringing forth the good ideas and sound investment, fiscal responsibility. With my uh, business uh, history that I have, not in studies, but actually as a businessman running a good uh, company, I know when it comes to taxes, as well as all kinds of other financing aspects, it would be good. So when it comes to, rather than having always municipal bonds, there are other legal instruments that could be used and satisfied and it help the people out entirely. And then also uh, bring stability to Missoula as a whole. Okay. Um, and if you are elected, what will your priorities be? Well, that would be the very first thing would, uh, be working directly with the neighborship or neighborhood leadership teams and then have them be my direct staff you know complete transparency that way we can have it and then establish a state planning and design workshop at community economic development workshops and then I would also advocate for the ending of all those resolution orders that uh, the city has made which really privileges only a select few companies to operate and uh, carry out their business activities and I see that as a big detriment. Um, you know, a lot of these fields are supposed to be open for uh, to all people under free market competition. And I see a lot of the stifling. A lot of people have problems saying, you know, taxes are too high. Missoula is not really that business friendly. I'd like to begin initiating those and solving those problems. 
And then obviously I'm really big in community cleanup projects and conservation because it's my own personal business. So I'd really be advocating for that. I think by trans transitioning away from a strict service-based economy and into a real estate-based economy as a stepping stone, that would be key in long term to have a multifaceted economy that's supportive of growth, industry, and even private and privacy rights. So kind of goes hand in glove. Okay. Um, and I'll just ask you to expand on the resolutions, because I know sometimes mm -hmm. when people watch our program, they're like, mm, resolution orders, what were they? They're really more like executive orders. They're not like city ordinances. These are mayoral given, and uh, we see that within the MEP. You know, they're a business league. They're good, but there's a lot of conflicting interest, and it's more of the social constructs rather than... Um, prohibition so to speak so to speak but what it turns out in its application and its actual development here you have a lot of people that their hands are tied and business relationships closed just because you know there's a resolution order out there privileging one company over another so okay. that's what it is favoritism mostly just end that and then establish you know the workshops where everyone can freely engage into that would be my my priority um Here's your future crystal ball question. What does the future of Missoula look like to you? Well, recently we have, uh, just on Tuesday night, we had the big old public hearing for the inward growth policy yeah. that they brought forth. Uh, there's a lot of, you know, misconceptions about having an inward growth policy, and even the definition of urban sprawl is uh, not really set in stone. Like, there's a lot of memorandums of uh, understanding out there. <clears throat> but our state legislature has issued a lot of um, proclamations about growth policies for communities, as well as other, you know, congressional or legislative committees' uh, understandings, you know, memorandums of understandings. But I would say for the future of what Missoula looks like, it's uh, right now like Charles Dickens, you know, A Tale of Two Cities. It's the best of times, but it's the worst of times. I believe that if they use the inward growth policy rather than as pattern designs, but use it for urban renewal initiatives, that would be paramount and key. But allow for expansion of communities. And the reason why is because that's what increases property, hope for home ownership, and then regional resource development. You know, we should be having an expansion of community growth plan based upon pattern designs under resource and allotment management plans. Just Interesting. Like, Could you yeah. explain that a little more? Well, res like a resource would be like co uh, comprehensive land use plans with designated use maps, like a whole bunch of resource maps overlaid. So you can build custom farm agreements, you know, between landowners and property owners. And then allotment management plan is based upon a six-mile square radius, you know, uh, federal township survey laws. So then people can go out there and actually homestead within these properties, wow. yeah. As long as it's not within a recreational park or any lands designated within the preservation system, there's a lot. Like, so do you see Missoula growing to the west, like where the Frenchtown Mill was and so on? Yeah, what I think, because we have a consolidated planning board. A lot of people don't know Missoula is a consolidated city-county government yeah. structure. Uh, our planning board, they share that. Yeah, our consolidated planning board, it's a city board, but it has county-wide jurisdiction. And we see Missoula, Lolo, Frenchtown, even uh, East Missoula, because those are technically considered independent town sites, you know. Yeah. They're not legally incorporated like Missoula is, but they're considered as town sites. So as we grow into the future, what I would like to see an expansion of communities, but having it nicely controlled, you know, is by complying with metropolitan level area planning. So then we include rural and urban neighborhoods together and then we can develop all kinds of uh, great infrastructure, whether it be for canals, ditches, or even a lot out plans and areas for people to go in and, and make a home site or a cabin site. So, but that's my biggest thing. And, and Missoula is, 
you know, you, Missoula County consists of 1.67 million acres. It's huge. Yeah, right? it's All larger. The ceiling. Yeah, it's larger than the state of Delaware. Right. All right. There's 450,000 acres that have already been placed in the preservation system. 910 are indemnity lands. These are lands without public acreage consideration, and just massive amounts of rolling hills, rough terrain, you know. And then the remaining 310,000 acres is within private property ownership, 300 of which is only commercial and only primarily owned by two corporations. Wow. So you could see a lot of uh, problems that could be arising in the future. And having an infill policy based upon pattern designs and with the acknowledgement that most of the city council have already stated, you know, they're only looking for Section 8 housing, so where is it going to be the hope for home ownership in 10 years from now following this policy? But like I said, it's not bad. You could still use it as urban renewal initiatives, but the big um, agenda would be to have an expansion communities based on metropolitan level area planning. Interesting, because a lot of candidates have, have embraced the inward growth policy along the lines of reducing car trips, emissions, mm -hmm. because we're in a kind of inversion layer bowl and so on. Yeah. Yeah, well, the same thing with having, like, a, they'll say, you know, cut back carbon emissions, but they have no means to clean the air. You now, by adhering to those traditional forced homesteading laws that's still on the books, so we can see Montana and federal law, you know, people can go out there, stake a claim, community stakeholding principles, you know, and then they can use their own life estates, you know, tree farming, and think about it, these are whole parcels that act as breathing machines and clearing out the air, so. The biggest thing is by merging property rights with our own community goals, not separating them, so. Okay, and here's your, um, your final question, which is the free form. Of all the things that we've talked about so far, what haven't we touched on that you want the voters to take away with them? Well, I think it's really interesting, especially here in Montana and Missoula, especially with having neighborhood councils. You know, neighborhood councils are technically considered as local government bodies, and we already have pretty high taxes. You know, having going from four to six percent increases annually. I mean, that's going to be devastating if we have to continue on that track. And a lot of these boards, I mean, they're good. You know, it brings upon public involvement, but the individual within the community can't actually have any decision-making authority, right? They can only give input, you know, which they can bring complaints against their neighbors, but they can't make policy, you know? So with having the neighborhood councils taken up all those vested and auxiliary powers of what the city council uh, has, we could really begin ending all those boards by having workshops. You know, we kind of already touched on that. I just wanted to kind of expand on it a little bit. And then any person within any neighborhood can go to another neighborhood and develop interlocal trade agreements. And I did that in Seattle when I worked out there for a while. I sat on a couple boards, a few, uh, for about two years I sat on uh, three land boards and two like uh, economic development boards and that's what we did we just began putting in these workshops allowing businessmen to come in and the very first year doing it trade increased by two three hundred percent so it works and then you know you base it on trade commerce within specific fields and then have the people build up relationships and you literally see an economic boom but going to real estate based economy first is that stepping stone into a multi-diverse economy. We have a little more time. Do you want to describe um, like a typical workshop that you would bring into this political? Sure. <clears throat> so instead of having a, so a vast amount of administrative cost, you know, paper, you know, everything that, you know, just to maintain the so to speak, the status quo, I, you know, it's just, it's not really, but it's just a daily procedure, so to speak. And actually pay, you know, on rotation, you know, private surveyors, you know, then they can go there, sign off on people's certificates of surveys, you know, if they want to um, develop their own uh, property better, you know, they can apply all the land classifications for the Department of Revenue to cut down their property taxes and then customize their own plan. 
Um, and then they can also be included that within a culture master plan that the neighborhood council has established, you know, for future growth or economic. So it's all integration, you know, and it's coordination, cooperation. And with the current boards that we have, it's more like uh, collaboration, um, especially with special interests. A lot of them are always there within the boards, um, like the CAPS. You know, they, they really only take in a couple applications, but only from but a few people. What are the CAPS? CAPS is the Community and Planning Services. Oh. You know, they do a great job, you know, when it comes to design work and as well as even resolving disputes. But for the most part, here in Missoula, an average person can see this, it's, it's really focused in within only a select few companies, even developers, you know. So by having a state planning design workshops where any people can just show up, customize their own parcels, and then have it recorded, you know, as well as economic uh, workshops so they can show up, enter into partnerships, you know, or associations freely, openly, then they could build their businesses, their family, estates, everything that they want to do. And it's for free, you know, and the administrative costs is you know, very minute because you're not having all these board members going through paperwork, paper reduction, you know, as well as other aspects too, you know, when it comes to paying um, those employees that do also have to record everything that the boards come, you know, bring forth. And it's just a lot, you know, just a lot of reduction while increasing, you know, community affairs. Interesting. So the idea of the workshops is that it's kind of an alternative hands-on bureaucracy? No, it's, it's, what it does is it places the right to, you know, public participation, you know, decision-making authorities right into the people's hands for they can develop policy. Not law, but policy. Right. So when it comes to trade or real estate or anything, they can work together and do it. Um, rather than always going through these boards upon boards, and a lot of them are kangaroo uh, boards. You know, you'll go to consolidated planning board, and you only get like one thing done. Then you got to go to board adjustments, do that. You know, it's like, so it's really a pain. You know, and then there's a lot of civil disputes that come up because of it, and that you know is even more of a mess. But having these workshops. It just allows the individuals to completely settle or develop whatever they want. And if there are any dis rising disputes, it, should, it goes to the courts like it always should have traditionally been. All right. Well, Michael, thank you so much for taking the time to come yeah. down here. Well, thank, uh, thank you for the people for watching, and thanks for you having me here. It's been a pleasure. Likewise. And thank you for watching our ongoing interviews with candidates for City Council, City of Missoula, in the fall of 2015. On October 12th, we're told the mail-in ballots are going to be issued to you, the voters. So that means if by October 12th you haven't seen your mail-in ballot, please contact Missoula County Elections Office to make sure they have the right address, they don't forward the mail-in ballots, and to make sure that you're registered to vote. Well, for MCAT, I'm Joel Baird. Thanks for watching.